All right, what's going on, everybody? So my name is PO17 or P017, whichever you prefer to call me. And today we're going to be taking a look at this TV that I have here right in front of me. So as you can see, uh, this is a Sony Trinitron, and it is a replacement for my JVC IR right now. Uh, the reason why I wanted to get this was just to see how a bigger Sony would work. I've never actually owned one personally, but I've seen my friends who's had some, and it's been okay. Uh, but I wanted to see for myself how it would fare. So, without further ado, we're going to be looking into the specs, some of the features and everything on this awesome Sony Trinitron KV32 XBR48. So, I hope you guys like this video when it comes to everything about it. And if you see one for yourself, hopefully this will help you out. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, so the first thing we're going to notice here, uh, this is on the top of the TV, of course. You're going to have your power button, as well as your channel up and down, volume up and down, your video select or your input select, as well as a channel setup. Uh, so that is really neat having the buttons just on top here, just because it gives it a more minimalist look. And also with this TV too, I did come with a manual uh, for an operating instructions. So it shows all the different models listed here, including the KV32 XBR48. It's really cool that this came with that, by the way. Uh, up on the top here, you got Trinitron XBR as well as two nice, soft stereo speaker grates, one on each side. And, of course, down here on the bottom, you get your Sony logo with, on the right over here, something really interesting to note is that there is a second video import for S-Video as well as composite video. So that's really interesting because this is an actual dedicated port, meaning that this isn't the only S-Video port. There's actually two of them, and I'll show you on the back here in just a second. But this is really awesome because it's on its own input. So right now, what I have this running to is my Sega Genesis. Um, of course, right now, what's actually playing on the screen is on my Sega Saturn through S-Video on the back. But without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at the back here. So this is the side profile of it. So you can see this is a curved set, 32 inches, like I mentioned before. And of course, this has the aperture grille screen like all Trinitrons do. In here, this is where you'll find one of your speakers. So in here, I know I don't have the back opened up, but there's two big speaker, uh, I guess you can call them like modules or whatnot. It's basically a big plastic thing with a speaker that pipes down out this way and also out the front. Kind of gives it a more pseudo stereo feel uh, for both sides. Really neat. Um, but on the back over here, so as you can see, big old Sony logo. Every single one of these Trinitrons had something like this to distinguish themselves, which is really awesome. And back here we have, of course, our model, the KV32 XBR48, and it was built in May of 1998. So this set is pretty old. It's about 25 years old. Down here, of course, is where you'll find all your inputs. So you have your RF inputs, or essentially what you would plug your coax cable into. Here is the first S-Video port, which is what I was talking about earlier, as well as composite down there if you wanted to use that. Another composite input as well. And then here, which is going to be really interesting to talk about, this has component video. I'll get to that in just a little bit. Then back here, of course, we also have uh, composite and audio outs if you need to route out to something else. But on the component video back here, so what's really neat about that, is this set built in 1998 was actually one of the first sets to have component video on a TV, which was really, really awesome. So this component video, it's routed to my GameCube, PS2, and Xbox, and it works extremely well for 480i gaming in terms of clarity and everything like that. Now, let's go ahead and get into the menu. So the first thing we're going to be looking at here, of course, is our remote. So this TV did come with a really awesome remote, and this is how it looks like it. I don't really know if there's a model number on it, but if it has this little nub right here, that kind of shows. However, you can use other Sony remotes for the set if need be. So up here is where you'll find your power button as well as your inputs, uh, and of course your menu button, which we'll take a look at right now. So for menu, what you get here is your modes. So uh, if I click it, actually, it's better if I don't click it. Uh, you can see you have movie mode, which you can cycle through a full, uh, couple different ones. I like to keep it on movie mode just because it looks a little bit nicer. Then you have your picture, which is your contrast, a uh, hue, or what it's known as is tint, uh, color, intensity, as well as brightness, sharpness, trinitone, which I believe is actually uh, color temperature. And then color correction, which is 
more, I believe it's actually Red Push. So for those in NTSC land, you may know about this, but those who aren't, Red Push is essentially a feature, quote unquote, on these uh, TVs here over in NTSC land that essentially boosts the value of reds on the set to make the image really warm. However, that's a bit of a detriment because it throws the color balance off on these sets, so I typically like to leave it off. But if you want a warmer picture, that's where you would change it at. And of course, as we cycle through, uh, there's this is the audio settings here, treble, bass, balance, anything like that. And then the rest, timer, uh, setup for channels and everything like that, as well as your video label. This is actually important, and I'll get to that in just a little bit, as well as your caption vision if you were to ever watch TV on this. But back to here, so we'll go ahead and look in video label. So this is interesting because you can see there's four videos, game, beta, skip, which is uh, because I don't use that input, and then video four. But I do want to show for this. So if you actually cycle to web on your inputs, it will actually darken the screen. So if you find that an input is uh, showing as web and the screen is too dark as opposed to the other ones, that would be why. So make sure to change it off of that to any other setting aside from skip unless you're not using it. So let's go ahead and take a look at some other features such as image quality. So obviously, as you can see here on the screen, I know I've been kind of on the same screen here for a little bit, but because this is a Trinitron Aperture Grill, it is known for being extremely sharp. And overall, 240p on this is absolutely incredible of a picture text is extremely readable on 240p and overall the scan line effect on this is wonderful actually in fact to show you some more let me go ahead and switch to a different game or actually it's not really a game it's more of a test suite to show you how this looks all right so we're on 240p test suite now this is still through s video but this time it's on my super nintendo so, of course, we're going to go ahead and cycle through a couple things to look at. Obviously, your grid patterns here, just to show the overall geometry and whatnot of this set. So, the one thing you might know, the, the geometry on this particular set is not all that great. Um, there is a little bit of waviness uh, on each corner, especially in the middle. This side is not the best for convergence, but overall, the picture is still really good. It's still really sharp. As we zoom in here to show you... Uh, how the grid uh, looks like. As you can see here, this is just in the middle of the screen too. If you actually go to the left or the right, where the focus is not as crazy, um, you will actually get a very detailed image on that. So, and of course, if you want to take a look at our team meal over here as well. So overall, it's a really surprisingly good set for that. When we go over here to the scroll test, of course, uh, scrolling, uh, so linearity and everything like that for both horizontal and vertical linearity, is extremely, extremely good. You don't see very much barrel rolling, anything like that. It's very linear across the entire screen as it goes across here. So I really like that for these Sony sets. They're very well known for having really good uh, overall, I guess you could call it scrolling. Uh, I don't really know what to call it. I like to call it linearity. It might not be the right term, but just goes to show this set is pretty solid for that. Now for 480i gaming, uh, I will say that because this 240p looks just absolutely incredible on these sets. That 480i is honestly going to suffer a little bit. You will see more of an interlace effect uh, with these just because they're very detailed. So with that being said, uh, that is kind of an overview of this set and how it is. Overall, the image quality is surprisingly good on these sets. I really do like the Sony look overall because they do have a unique look as opposed to your standard SWAT mask uh, televisions and video monitors and whatnot. So, what do I think about this set overall since I've been using it for a while? Personally, I actually don't like it that much. Um, but that's not because of the image quality. I've had some issues with this set that I've been trying to dial out for a while. It may end up needing a recap pretty soon. I mean, being 25 years old, go figure. Even though it's in really good condition, overall the corners are not the greatest. Sony's, for some reason, always suffer from issues with convergence. Always, I don't understand what it is, if I just have bad luck or what. But every Sony I've ever owned, bar one, has had really terrible geometry and convergence that I've had to correct. So this one, unfortunately, I'm not able to correct it exactly, like I said, over here on each side. It does pin inwards a little bit, and there's not really a way to fix that. 
So I'm thinking capacitors may be an issue at fault there. But that's not to harp on this TV necessarily. Like I said, this is just my experience. But overall, the set itself is surprisingly good. So without further ado, my conclusions on the set. All right, so my conclusions on the set are the fact that this is a surprisingly good 32 inch set for a Sony uh, TV. And the reason why I even have this in the first place too was just the fact that it is an XBR line. So it's one of the higher end lines uh, for the Sony TVs back in the day. So I really, really, really do like it. Also, you may notice on the screen, uh, this is actually Magical Drop 2. So the previous uh, thing that I showed you besides the Artemio's uh, 240p test suite was actually Magical Drop 3 up here for the Sega Saturn, for those who want to know. But uh, because I just wanted to show something a little different, I also have Magical Drop 2 for the Super Famicom, just to show off a little more of the image. But other than that, that's all I got for you today, guys. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you really liked it, give it a thumbs up and comment down below what you thought about this TV. If you have the same set, if you have some of the same issues that I do, or any of the same likes or dislikes that I have with these sets as well. Other than that, guys, thank you so much. Subscribe for more content coming soon because I do want to make some more videos on not just this set, but the set next to it right here, which is going to be a really interesting video to make. So yeah, other than that, thanks, guys. I'll see you guys later in the next video.